Good morning, church. Yes, today we are looking at uh, the enemy within. The enemy within you and I. And uh, yes, we're going to be guided today by the scripture that we plug from our second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8 to 9. Uh, that scripture is going to be supported uh, again by uh, Romans 7, verses uh, 15 to 12. Uh, yes, we are looking at the enemy within you and I. So it's the enemy within. So those with Bibles, may you please open with me to Second uh, Corinthians chapter 12. This is 8 to 9. Those without, I'm going to be reading now. Uh, from verse 8 says, Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest in me, may rest on me. Hallelujah, that's the word of the Lord. We praise the Lord for his word, and uh, that scripture, as we have said, is coming from 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8 to 9, and in that background, we actually see it's uh, Paul, who is talking there and Paul has been actually been afflicted and have been suffering, struggling with sin, struggling with sin that is internal in himself. So he is actually saying that to us. So yes, enemy within is referring to sin that was within Paul and this is what happens mostly to many of us. So why do we have an enemy within us? Because sin becomes an enemy because sin is planted by the devil and sin when it's in us if you don't read of it very carefully and you quickly lose your control and then a sin becomes and causes you to actually have that enemy and struggle with it what i can use in terms of an analogy it is like you now have cancer in you and when you have cancer sometimes before you realize it would have eaten you up and by the time you realize it could have been too late and it is stage probably four and then you are struggling. But the beauty here is we are looking at this enemy within that you need to discover as quickly as possible. And uh, this requires you and I to actually look into ourselves internally and then you reflect, take an audit of yourself and you see the enemy is underlying in you. So this is how Paul felt. So for he was struggling, for whatever he was doing, he could feel there is pain in me. I can't just move away from it. I can't remove it. Then he asked Jesus, then Jesus says, the grace that I have is sufficient for you. I'm not going to take it away from you. This is uh, quite a very uh, challenging uh, scripture. Because it's like you are kneeling down and praying to Jesus and saying, please may you take away the sin from me. And then Jesus, of course, he is right by saying, my grace is enough. That grace is enough to actually take care of all that. In my weakness is where I reveal my power. So when you feel you are at that point where the weakest point, call upon my power, which is the Holy Spirit, and then you will be uh, attended to. So Paul felt it was there. He said it, he went to Jesus asking three times. You can imagine. So at that point in time, if, I was, if it was me or it was you, you may have felt probably Jesus is not paying attention to me. Why is he doing this to me? But he was absolutely right because he says there is grace that is sufficient to actually take care of all our needs. Be they problems and thorns that we have in us, grace is enough. That's what you are told there. But you need to understand first, what is it that you have in you? Sin which you have in you. If you allow sin to be in you for such a long time, we have said it becomes a cancer that eats you. So we need to actually read of this in us. Because the question now is, at what stage is your cancer? At what stage is that enemy within you? If it is at the beginning of uh, uh, the early stages, you need to quickly rid yourself of it. 
if it has become a cancerous that has gone to stage four, then if you don't move fast, it becomes actually terminal. Then it means you will not have eternal life, so you need to move as fast as possible. So that's why it is important for you and I today that we look at that enemy within us, and then we must identify that enemy and quickly rid ourselves of that enemy. That's what we need to do. So if you allow sin to actually be in you, what it does is like cancer, it takes over all the system of your body and then it takes over all the controls. And when sin takes control of your body, just like cancer takes over your body in the stage four, it becomes actually gets to actually like a cruise mode. It will be in cruise control where it takes over everything. It just goes wherever it likes. Sin will take you there. So this is why what we hear Paul was sort of like in that stage where he felt, I can't take it out of me. Please, Jesus, help me. And he went three times. And Jesus said, no, my grace is sufficient to take care of that. It was provided that you shall live by grace and through faith. And if you do so, it will take care of all sins that are afflicting you eternally. So this is how it was with Paul there. But at this juncture, you can actually see Sin was now in cruise control. Sin was now uh, taken over. So when sin takes over, it means it will drive in that cruise control. You are heading headlong to disaster. And it's going to be a huge crash. You need that grace that Jesus told Paul. You need that grace of God to actually help you so that you don't get be driven by sin in a cruise control where it takes over all the system of your body and your thinking and everything. So once in, it is in that mode, you can't do anything. So you need to be a person who is aware of themselves. That's why we say you need to look into yourself eternally as I am internally I see. If I do have, then I quickly need to actually move from that. So that's what sin does. This is the state under which Paul was. So if sin is that cancerous, it, it actually eats you up and you can't do much, you need help. The help that I would also recommend as we are given by the scripture today is that you go to God's grace because this is what Jesus said to Paul, that I have by grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weaknesses. So that's what we need to remember. So when you are in that position, but it feels like because Paul went to Jesus about three times, if you look at it, it feels like he was now trapped by sin. He was now in pain. He was now in affliction. He was in that situation where he couldn't get out of it because he went back three times. It means Paul was now trapped by sin. And if he allows him to trap your body, then it means you become a prisoner. If you become a prisoner of sin, it means then you are now chained to isolation. You are now chained by the devil. He reminds you his devices and his schemes are now getting hold of you. You can't move away from it. And when you are in that state, it means you are unable to actually rid yourself or free yourself from sin. Because for him to go back three times, it means Paul felt he was now trapped by sin. He was now captured by sin. He was now in a place where he couldn't do anything. He was now in a situation where he couldn't actually help himself. So he was seeking help. But Jesus told him, yes, you can seek help. It is provided. The grace of God is there for all of you, including you and I today. When you feel you are trapped by sin, you need to tap on the grace of God through faith. And then, yes, Jesus will rescue you from that. But we need all to understand that if we don't do so, then we'll be in trouble. Because what then happens is, if you don't do that, you will be in trouble. You will be trapped by sin. You will be captured by the law of sin, which means it's death, which is the result. You all know what the scripture says. The wages of sin is death. So if you can't rid yourself of sin, then it means you are now trapped by the laws of sin and they lead you to death. That becomes the end result. But I like Paul for one thing. He identified what he was suffering from. He identified what was underlying within him. 
He identified that Adam within himself. He identified that he was heading headlong to disaster. He identified that he was actually taken in captivity by sin. He identified that he was now imprisoned and imprisoned and captured by sin. He identified that the spirit of sin that was in him was getting hold and getting tighter and tighter and tighter. He could actually free himself. So he felt that then he seeked the help from Jesus. And he was pointed to the solution, which is the grace of God. God. It is enough for anybody who is under that situation. Right now as you are sitting, right now as I stand here, if I feel I need to reflect the face, if I feel the emotions that I'm actually captured, I'm prisoned by the spirit of sin, then I need to actually tap into the grace of God because this is what Paul was told by Jesus Christ, that you need to tap into it actually. That's where you get it. But obviously you may not understand. What are we talking about? Some may actually not understand. Sin it's just general, but I may break down sin into many things that you all know. This may be a scenario that you actually could be uh, in you. There is so much greed in you. So when you have that, it is sinful because greed is actually a sin before God. It may be a case that you are this person who is trapped by anger. You know, somebody who doesn't have any tolerance for your life, this is who you are. It means you are under the captivity or you are trapped by that or you are now imprisoned by your short-term temper, by your anger that you have. So this becomes your enemy within you. You may be this kind of man or a woman who can't help themselves, but you can always find yourself, your eyes landing on women, on men, and you become, you do adulterous things even though you are married. You are single, you become someone who goes in and will do fornication. This is a sin that is within you. This is the thorn that is within you. This is the enemy that you have within you that you need to rid yourself. This is someone who is full of malice, vengefulness, anger. All those could be the kind of sins, or the sin that is in you. That could be your enemy that is within you. You are this person who is fond of just stealing or breaking the commandments. This is who you are and this becomes the enemy within you. But the trouble is when that enemy actually resides in you for that long, he has the habit to actually take over. This is where you see someone. If someone is a liar, they become a pathological liar. They can't help it, but they just lie. If someone has now been ingrained in stealing, they can't help themselves. They just steal. If someone has become so promiscuous they can't help themselves they continue to do so if someone has become someone who is anger so much that they can't control it they can't help themselves but they continue to do it then what that means to you brethren if you are there if you got this person this habit of stealing you can't help it it means this is your enemy within you that becomes your enemy within yourself so what he does is he actually be enhanced by the devil. Those are his devices and he's scheming. And once you get oh, you, you, are, you are held by that, he would have begotten you through sin. And when you are begotten by the devil, you can't now unshackle uh, that. So you need to quickly turn to what Jesus told Paul, that my grace is actually enough. And when you do so, that will help you. Let's also read and hear what Romans are. Uh, 7 verses 15 to 17 say that will also help you if you are in that scenario so I'm gonna read Romans 7 verses 15 uh, to 17 uh, it starts from uh, 15 says I do not understand what I do for what I want to do I do not do but what I hate I do and if I do what I do not want to do I agree that the law is good. As it is, it is no longer I myself who do it, but it is sin living in me. This is it. So that, this is a position that we get from Romans 7, verse 15, 15 to 17. When sin becomes to the stage 4 of cancer, it has now become cancerous. It is no longer you. It is no longer I 
but it is sin that lives in you. It is no longer I, it is no longer you, it is no longer anybody, but it is sin that lives in you that takes charge. Because I may have what I want and know things that are not good, but because sin lives in me, and because sin has taken our cruise control, because sin has become stage 4 cancer, I can't control it anymore because it is now sin controlling me. This is the position that we hear Paul again there. In Romans 7 verse 15 to 12, he was in such stage 4 cancer, he couldn't even control it now. He was in such stage where sin has taken our cruise control. He was no longer able. He was in a stage where he was captured and conquered and also trapped by sin. He could actually unshackle himself from sin. This is how Paul felt and he went to Jesus who is actually our answer to everything and he was given the advice that he needs to turn to the grace of God and that's what you and I need. We need to turn to the grace of God. This is the answer. So this this is what you need, brethren. So when you have such a scenario, I say to you, you and I, we need to reflect, identify that enemy within us. Because the trouble with that enemy, sometimes he underlies. He's underlying in you quietly, but eating you slowly, just like cancer. Some people discover that they do have it when it's actually stage three. Some people in stage two. Some when it's even too late. So this is what sin is like. It behaves like cancer is actually cancerous to our system, to our heart, to our mind. Sometimes you have those, those thoughts that are underlying in you. Those thoughts that are deep rooted in your heart. And you don't realize this is who you are. So the sooner you realize, the better. So I want to thank Paul because Paul was one who was fortunate. He quickly actually identified when he looked at himself, he saw that he had that cancer stage 3. And he quickly went for treatment. The chemotherapy that came from that cancer is Jesus Christ pointing Paul to the grace of God. That's where everything is. So we need to be like Paul. We quickly identify the cancer that's in him and quickly go back to Jesus. Identify the trappings that he actually had with sin that he was actually cornered. You need to identify that you are trapped by sin and you can't get out of it and then you seek help. That's the message. But you need to actually, you needed to have identified the sin that is in you. So yes, if this is who we are, we need to take reflection and introspection into us and understand our internal and we look at it because sin is the habit to underlie. Sometimes you think I'm okay, I'm, I'm a right person, when you are not because the cancer is there, underlying and growing. So what should we do then, Father, brethren? What should we do? We ask our Father. What should we do, Jesus? He comes in just like I said there to Paul. In uh, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, there, verse 8 and 9, where he said, uh, My grace is sufficient. In verse 9, there. That's where the answer. We need then to turn to the grace of God. So, why, when you turn to the grace of God in earnest, you must then confess and repent when you do so. That is the beginning of our unshaking the shackles that are caused by sin. So unshake the sinful shackles and shake that law of sin which we said is death. You need to unshake yourself from it by confessing and repenting as a brethren. So when you do so, then what you need to do is to actually live by the grace of God. And in the grace of God, you find that you need to actually walk in spirit and you live a spiritual life. And when you are in that spiritual life, you need to actually, actually be holy. And then you allow the Holy Spirit to be in you when he's in you. The indwelling spirit will be at work now to actually work in you and help you every day. So that I will start to provide the chemotherapy of that cancer that is now in you. And you remove all that cancer. Bit by bit the cancer will go. Bit by bit you see Paul is actually one of the biblical giants. But he was also suffering from this underlying uh, enemy within he was struggling with going back to Jesus three times. He was struggling. He is a biblical giant, but he was also struggling. So it is not able. Any one of us can be in that scenario. But watch what you need to do. Watch what you need to do is what Paul did. He actually started to confess. This is what he did there. 
that I am struggling. I have this thing in me. I can't help myself. It is not me who lives. It is that sin in me that lives. It's controlling my life. I can't take charge of it. I am a sinful person. Help me, Jesus. I am very sinful. This is what Paul did. So he confessed. And then Jesus told him, Grace, grace of God is sufficient. For my power is strong in weakness. And Paul grabbed the advice. And he, as he confessed, he started to repent. When he repented, Paul became transformed. When he was transformed, Paul never looked back. He never changed. He kept on walking and doing God's work. It was only because he managed to unshackle the trappings and the bondage of sin by confessing and repenting and then was pointed to the right place by Jesus. So from that moment, Paul was now living a spiritual life. Yes, this is what we need to do. It is very possible. Yes, you can be in the Paul situation there, but you can also be in the later situation of Paul where he was now walking in spirit. So that's what you want, brethren. Express yourself and confess to Jesus and then repent and then you will be restored in the spiritual life. And once you are in that, you can now move on and you'll be freed from the law of sin. You'll be freed from the jaws of sin and death. This is what you and I need, brethren. And then once you do that, you must then walk according to and live according to the spirit. Once you are in that, Keep soldiering on and do not turn back. Paul is a typical example. When he found that grace that he was told by Jesus, he never turned back. He continued to actually go and navigating all trials, tribulations, and challenges, but he never looked back. This is what you need, brother. Identify it as Paul did. And then confess and repent as Paul did. And move and walk in the spiritual life as Paul did. Do not actually turn back as Paul did. That's what you need to do. Paul, Paul, Paul. A typical example. This is how he became, later on became a biblical giant. So that's what we need to emulate and also learn from him. Jesus is there for you. Turn to him today. If you are being afflicted by sin, you are so conflicted in you, you feel there is pain in you, raise your hand up, pray with you right now and turn to Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father, for this message by teaching us, Father. I commit myself and I bring myself. Help me to remove myself of that thing that is in me. Help me to remove that enemy within me. And those who are also with me, who have raised their hands, they are also praying with me that, Father, your grace may it be upon us. May your grace be sufficient to actually rescue us from where we are. Please, Father, help us remove the sins from us. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. His grace is enough. Thank you so much. We'll see you next week.